going to speak about the power of minding your business and why I feel like it's something we need to speak more about, right? So um, this is something I've come to realize. I don't know if I think I've said this in one of the videos about reading this certain verse about God listening into the things you speak about, right? And sometimes people forget that the, the things you speak about isn't just by your lips but it's also by your mind because the things you speak god listens to what you think about and god listens to what you speak like what you express through your tongue because those two things they impact they influence your life quite literally like everything in your life that manifests starts off from a word it's either a word from God, a word from self, a word from people. And for people who don't believe this, I want you to watch, like, I want you to speak a word and keep saying it over and over again. And I'm going to, I know I said this is about minding your business and I'm coming to it, but I need you to understand a lot about the power of thought and the power of your words because it's going to come to play into how you mind your business. So um, I remember this one time I was questioning the thing about what you think, if what you think really manifests. And I remember thinking this word, making myself consciously think about this word over and over again about myself, over and over again. It was a positive word. And the craziest thing is that that the following week after the week that I was thinking that, sorry, excuse me. Um, that following week, I'm telling you, I'd meet people who would call me that name over and over again, every single day. And it made me realize that really the way you think really impacts how the manifestation of your life, right? How your life turns out. And it's the same way with your tongue because the word of God says that out of the fullness of your heart the mouth speaks so there is nothing that comes out from your word that did not start off from your spirit your soul right like your mind and it flows to your tongue you know your tongue is like the outpouring going back to minding your business why this is important is this it's like an investment it gives you time to create space for what you want what you need in your life like you get to understand the vision of your life if you're focusing on who you are who you want to be it's very hard to focus on what other people want to be at the expense of your purpose your life you get what i'm saying and this does not mean don't uh, care or have compassion or empathy for other people it just means know your space know the calling god has called for you you know and that means also understanding it's not you're not called to help like, everyone share, subscribe. you know we are all called to help but we are not all called to help everyone there are people who are called to bring people out of the streets there are people who are called to enable people to open up their own businesses there are people who are called to fight for the justice of people so yeah it's like for example like uh, a trade union cannot fight for the uh, rights of a woman who has been deprived of a title deed that is rightfully has you get what I'm saying so we might all have a similar intention but the purpose is not the same right so uh, when it comes to minding your business you need to understand that you are not called for everyone you're not the cup of tea for everyone that is not what you're supposed to be you're supposed to be like a certain thing at a certain time to certain people to certain situations to certain place uh, the second one I want to speak about is that uh, the power of minding your business is this it creates time for you and this is what I mean by it you have more time to do your stuff right you have more time to be organized you have more time to journal you have more time to read you have more time to connect to the right people you have more time to listen to music you have more time to rest right so because you find that if you don't understand that uh, perspective you will find yourself running around in places you're not supposed to be you'll find yourself wasting time then that you're not supposed to waste you'll find yourself being left behind even when it comes to life because 
you invested your time in other people's time other people's businesses right so that's what i mean the next one is this <laughs> and i'm going to say this because it's something i've experienced but it's crazy connecting when you connect with god you realize that it helps you mind your business a lot and it's crazy because it sounds like a selfish thing like being about yourself but i've realized that you cannot connect with god if you're not about yourself and i don't mean this in being selfish and being greedy and being stingy i mean that when you connect when you find time for the things you want in life you have a vision for the things you want it takes away from the things you waste outside of yourself and you take it right to God and God finds a way to build foundations in you and God finds a way to um, crack things that needs a cracking in your life you know like those things you're hell bent on this is who I am this is who I'm going to you know get out of this world as and you cannot change me and you cannot do anything about it and you realize that oh oh actually you can change a lot about yourself you can change even your plans when you refocus on god when your business is god but the business of god is about sorry like i said nairobi is hella cold <laughs> So it helps you like reconnect with the purpose of God because connecting with God is connecting with yourself. It's finding your purpose and being grounded in the thing God created you for because God created us all for a greater purpose. Like you get like no one was placed in this world to be nothing. Like that's what I'm trying to mean. The next thing about minding your business is that you speak less. When you, it's like when your mind is focused on uh, your purpose you speak less and this is this is what i mean speaking less you know sometimes when you blah 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 it you bring out a lot of nonsense there's a lot of nonsense say there's a lot of uh death spoken in your tongue and by the death i mean negativity spoken through your tongue um it like helps you be still you know stillness keeps you quiet and it, when you're quiet there are things you realize there are things you see that you never saw before like you can be in an environment where you are so attached to the way people were you're so connected to it and you keep quiet and you find yourself like you're drawing away because you realize this is not who I am. This is not where I belong. This is not the vision God has for me. And there's a reason why I'm at this place at a certain time, right? So it gives you a stillness. Meditation. I don't like speaking about this thing, meditation, because a lot of people get confused by it. But like I said, if you do follow me, I speak a lot about what I mean by meditation. This is what I mean by being still. If you have meditated before, whether in the right way or the wrong way, you realize that you need to be, what is it, like connect to a higher self, right? And connecting to a higher self means that you get out every thought of yourself. Like, it's weird because I'm speaking about getting back to yourself. Uh, but it brings out like if you have chaos in your mind chaos in your soul it just makes them it's like putting them in a box and burning the box so that's what minding your business does for you it's like it brings a stillness in you it, it's like you get what I'm saying like if you get my expression you get what I'm trying to say so it focuses you on your vision it's easier to focus on your vision it's easier to understand what you need to change in yourself how to change it who to connect with to change those things if it's something you're struggling with it helps you understand the time you're wasting it helps you understand the people you need to cut off the people you need to bring into your life because a lot of us have disconnected at times with the right people and connected with people who are kind of like yes men who allow us to be our old self who allow us to be in comfort zones another thing about minding your business that i've realized is that <clears throat> like life is life is long right life is long because you have more time to do what you want to do and 
it's crazy that you know that it's funny minding your business it makes i don't know it's like magic it's like god listens to you you know the the uh, the what is it called the perspective i give you about when you think about when you think negative or speak negative about others it's like the word of god the way to, it says that god listens to you and he hears what you say and he acts on what you say so let's say if you're minding your business it's basically you think about your life you think about your purpose and your goals and that's what you speak about so when god is listening into you it's not about someone else so it's like and he comes when he comes he starts investing in what you're thinking about and what you're speaking on so when you're speaking or thinking about negatively about other people that's what he acts on he goes to the people you're thinking negatively on and he acts on it and that is why people always say that if you're waiting for god to punish your enemies it will never happen it's not because god does not avenge the people he loves it's because you cannot invest your time in others you have to invest your time in yourself and yourself means working on your purpose so when you think thoughts positive thoughts and you speak positive things and it's uh, concerning your life and the things you want to do and the people you want to help God comes and acts on that agenda right so there is no time for looking at others there is only time to focus on yourself there is only time to invest and rediscipline yourself in what you're supposed to do I hope you're understanding what I'm saying so um, I don't know if I let me try a story like let's say I'm, I'm God right and you're out there and you're spe and you're thinking about um planting seeds like let's say you're thinking about planting beans that is your agenda you want to plant beans and as god when i come to you when i come to listen to what you're speaking about you're always speaking about maize you're always thinking about maize you're always you know thinking like it's always maize 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 so as god when i come to you i find people who will bring maize to you when I bring rain, I find, you know, I check the seeds you planted that are maize. When I cause things to grow, I cause your maize to grow greater, right? Not your beans. Why? Because that's the power of the thought and that's the power of your tongue and that's the power of minding your business. It's, it's like a garden. It's like putting everything into that seed. Like you, it's like planting the seed that you want but watering the one that you don't want so that's what it is the next one is <clears throat> you cannot be anyone else and that's your power when you yourself no one can compete with you it's the same thing with identical twins identical twins can do the same exact things they can think the same way but their giftings are completely different you've seen even kids who have been born with their hearts or parts of their body attached their heads attached and when they grow up when they're not separated even when they grow up you find that one is drawn to one certain thing and the other is drawn to another certain thing and it becomes like an imprisoning they feel like they're imprisoned and that's the same way with minding your business minding your business and minding other people it's like having a conjoinment of heads and it's being a prisoner of a thing that is not supposed to be yours. So when you're yourself, when you're minding your business, it's like a separation of the conjoinment. I don't know if conjoinment is a right English word, but I know, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So you need to detach because, you know, it's very easy to get lost in other people because you don't want the responsibility of being yourself. And I find that when you mind your business it's like taking up a responsibility it's like saying okay i was born for this reason these are my obligations these are my responsibilities these are the things i'm supposed to sacrifice in minding my business and it forces you to take weight to carry a weight on yourself of being yourself because you can carry the wrong weight right it's like going to the gym and and working out with the wrong weights there is a weight that if you want to add weight there is a weight there is a certain way you 
exercise and if you want to cut weight there is a certain way you exercise but when it comes to generalizing it's all called training it's all called exercising and that's the same way with minding your business and minding other people's business you go to the gym you want to add weight and you're working out in a certain way that makes you lose weight instead of adding weight so minding your business is like exercising for your goal you know like exercising to add weight or exercising to lose weight if that's what you want so i'm going to attach this with thinking the power of the mind because and the power of your tongue and the power of acting on those things because i feel like i've spoken about it so many times but every time i feel like the expression of it is different so i'm going to go right into how your thoughts and your words and your actions translate into the person you want to be so i'm going to tell you a little story when i as a young person i always remember that i always had a picture of who i wanted to be a certain way i wanted to be and sometimes i even voiced actually a lot of times i voiced the things that i wanted to do the people i wanted to help you know a certain way i wanted to do things and growing up i realized even if there are things that i did not go towards that direction in a in some divine way god has pushed me to do either something similar or something better than that or something along those lines you get and this is why uh, it's very important for you to understand what you think what you say and how you act manifests who you are and i want you to think about your life like today it translates to 10 years later in your life everything you do now will translate is a fruit for what you will be in 10 years from now because a lot of people ignore the now because they think ah if i become whatever i am right now i can be whatever i want to be in the future and that's not true every decision you make right now contributes to who you become in your future and it does not matter whether you have the resources whether you're lacking or you are in bounty of the resources you have there are people who started off with a lot of resources that they thought in 10 years this is the same person i'm going to be and they squandered the opportunities they squandered their time they squandered their thoughts and their words and they squandered their actions into instead of being who they were called to be and i found that very important to be conscious of what you think about what you say and the things you do <clears throat> sorry like i was saying like be confident in who created in who god created you as be confident in that and have the trust that whatever you are whatever you feel whatever you believe inside you is a making of god whatever mistakes you make is a making of god because even the mistakes that you make they they sharpen you you know how like you can sculpture a thing the the molding okay i'm trying to explain things that i've never done so please bear with me like when you sculpture there is a sharpening there is a way you sharpen uh this feature into a thing you want that's what mistakes are and that's what inadequacies are they are not supposed to take away from you they're supposed to sharpen you into being this sculpture that can be placed on a museum that people can be awed about that people can gain from that people can be impacted or inspired by i don't know if you've ever gone to an art gallery and there are pieces on the wall pieces on boy there are piece, pieces on the wall and there are pieces on the ground right they are placed and it's an idea of someone and it's just there in stillness but it impacts people there are people who can look at a piece of art and cry there are people who can look at a piece of art and be so moved that it changes their life there are people who look at the mona lisa and people have different thoughts about it you know it's like marlene monroe marlene monroe is an art piece of god when you listen to her story when you watch her it inspires you to become a certain way right that is the same way with your originality whatever god has placed you an original making of you that is supposed to impact people and when you deprive yourself of becoming that you become less and you become 
it's like be reducing yourself to a nothingness when you morph yourself into being something others are you morph yourself into being a nothingness because you're becoming everything but yourself and you're supposed to be a masterpiece you're supposed to thrive in being a masterpiece you're supposed to get god's glory in being a masterpiece you know like being an original self of yourself is like being in God's exhibition like think of God as the exhibi exhibition exhibition an art exhibit you know whatever this English came with a ship you understand what you're understanding so you're placed on the wall of God right and instead of staying on the wall and being glorying in the thing that God made you as you know being glorying in the beauty of who you are you're looking at other art pieces and you're falling off the wall so people can't even see your magnificence because you keep falling off because you're watching others right so that's how originality is be on the wall and let people admire your magnificence because that is what God made of you and by this I mean be exactly what God made of you right if whether it's in faith whether it's in business whether it's in whatever you're doing you know whether you're on social platforms don't try to morph into what others are because especially nowadays when you check even on social platforms it's like everyone is competing to be the same thing instead of people morphing or being themselves like you know a lot of us we watch people because they're originals like the funny thing is this i love fashion but when I'm watching stuff, I don't watch a lot of fashion. It's just one or two people that I watch because I find their fashion very unique. But most people I watch are people who are homely, people who are in shambles, people who are doing basic things, but it looks so lovely, beautiful, right? So that explains when I say about being original. Being original sets you apart, right? and it's beautiful and i hope that you understand how beautiful that is and how offensive it is to god when you think that whatever you are is inadequate that whatever you are is less than and it's not special everyone was made special but you cannot uh, thrive in being special until you know how special you are in being yourself right and yeah and be humble and be yourself people like I cannot emphasize it enough you know if you never get anything from me please be just original like I pray to God that every one of you becomes original because that is the beginning of being empowered and that is the beginning of peace in the world you know how people say when we stop war there will be peace if we stop being everyone else and we start thinking positive and we start speaking positive when we start minding our business we do actions that lead to the purpose that god made for us not for everyone for just us this world will have peace that is the simple fact that i've come to realize like peace is in us being ourselves it's in us following our purpose it's in us being original and it's in us connecting to our conscience because our conscience has truth and it tells us when we are right and when we are wrong right I could speak a lot I've already spoken a lot I'm out of breath but I appreciate your time I appreciate you subscribing you following I appreciate all of you so thankful and God bless you so much because everything you're giving I'm receiving through the hands of God right and I'm so humbled by it and I love you I appreciate you and let's rebel against conforming to the world right and let's just be kind and great people let's be grounded and let's stand up for the things we believe in i love you and i mean paul and equal lewa place to compromise tena google nipe scripture